imagine instead of trying to stop ants from spreading, you are tasked to do just that, while a sadistic researcher does tests on your colony, constantly laughing like a maniac. <laughs> Sounds fun, right? Empires of the Undergrowth is a base building sandbox colony simulator which sees us take control of numerous ants, digging out large nests, providing the queen with enough food to breed and face off against tiny as well as enormous enemies living in the various lively levels narrated by David Attenborough's cousin's friend. These rove beetle larvae are distant relatives of the European devil's coach horse. To be fair, he does a good job. After many hours of building, breeding and fighting other insects, arachnids and reptiles, I can tell you if Empires of the Undergrowth is a real fun or a refund. With the choice to follow a gripping story, picking multiple different scenarios or custom games, we get to jump into a small nest occupied by an ant queen and a handful of workers. With some at first awkward feeling controls, we dig through the earth, encountering enemies and a food source, allowing us to spend this resource for eggs, spawning different types of ants, gathering more food, taking down tougher creatures and let us achieve the numerous different goals each mission has, ranging from the quest to increase the population, survive a specific number of nights or defeat a gigantic frog, to name a few examples. With the story missions being not only the best entryway to the game's features, but also an incredible tale from the viewpoint of the ants, we follow the journey of a small ant queen trapped in a research lab, while various tests are being done pitting our small insects against large forces, gigantic creatures and later on monstrous abominations courtesy of one brilliantly voiced researcher who made this guy actually look quite likable. Yes, the stinger opens and it's functional. Go my furious hybrid, spike the ants. Spike them. With a twist that might even shock people who saw the ending of The Sixth Sense coming, we set aside the story and take a look into the gameplay, which is the bread and butter of the game, or in the ants case, the leaves and larvae. With the different ants split into workers and soldiers, we gather food brought to our larder, which we then use to enlarge our forces by breeding more ants and venture further into the earth or dig our way up to the surface. With the food source being one resource we need to constantly fill our storage with, we further have to keep the size of our storage updated to avoid a halt in our ant breeding mechanism. This breeding is simple and effective, where we place down breeding tiles costing food and the workers taking an egg from the queen placing it softly onto the tile. Hatching the egg requires further food resources and once the ant is born and alive, it's alive, we can place it into one of the many groups. These groups can be directed towards different goals with a simply placed pheromone marker and the intuitive options to let them gather food, fight enemies or both. Sending them towards the direction of the enemies sees them automatically fight to the death and picking up the remains of our opponents as food resource. If our ants meet their demise during the battle, a new egg will be hatched, replacing the ant we just lost, allowing for a constant stream of crawlies. Our army's power therefore is set up by the amount of soldiers we have and the consistent supply of reinforcements, as well as a clever upgrading system implemented into the game. Every ant tile can be enhanced two times, increasing the ant's work speed, attack power, movement speed or give them special abilities once they reach max level. This is done by setting up the tiles in a chamber, clustering them together with every tile, increasing the upgrade counter for the adjacent slate. This sees us smartly pick out spots where to put our breeding tiles and dig out more of the ant hill, while we constantly have to check for enemy chambers which can surprise us at any minute, taking down our whole progress during the run. This progress during a mission gets either completely lost by our queen dying or by finishing the mission, seeing us return to our main base which is constantly growing. This growth is possible by utilizing the rewards of finished missions, seeing us dig out a larger ant hill, use the dropped food to hatch ants and upgrade their abilities and stats with jelly, resembling some sort of tech or talent tree. These upgrades and building a large army is necessary for the main story missions, seeing our farm pitted against various tests of the researcher, starting out with small ant groups and resulting in world ending events on an ant scale with deadly contraptions and enormous bugs. Every finished story mission sees us unlock further levels with new ants, different mechanics and great surroundings, giving us numerous different settings to experience. One level saw us utilize red ants to build 
reaches over a river. Another pitted us against a gigantic spider, while a rivaling ant force tried to take our territory, while yet another mission gave us ants reliant on leaves instead of meat, resulting in a fight over their rich food sources with other anthills. Even though the gameplay routine and controls of the different groups are far less strategic compared to other RTS games and the lack of a saving option during a mission is quite annoying, the simplicity of the gameplay combined with the great documentary style narration, the lively world and great blend of one-off missions and constant progression sees Empires of the Undergrowth being an absolute real fun instead of a refund. Would you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comments and let the ants roam free in your pantry, they are just there to feed my army.